In this video we are going to talk about vintage variations in winemaking. So before starting this video like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. Wine is lovely because it reflects a lot of unpredictable factors. Every season of the year is unique. Wine produced during drought seasons is considerably different from wine produced during flood seasons. Wine styles are influenced by winemaking methods as well. The use of wild yeast against inoculated yeast or the fermentation of a wine in stainless steel as opposed to oak can produce two quite different wines. Comparing wines from several vintages side by side might reveal some intriguing narratives. The growth season in 2019-20 was hot and dry. Looking back, it was the final harvest following a protracted period of drought. Low yields were produced, and the harvesting process was difficult. In the growth season of 2020 to 2021, the weather was practically ideal. The weather ranged from pleasant to warm. The harvest season was almost ideal, while rainfall was about average. It has been a cold and rainy growing season thus far. Let's hope that the events for vintage 2022 take place in dry, warm weather. The Riccaterra Aglianico wines are the ones we've chosen to compare vintages of 2020 vintage versus the 2021 vintage. This grape variety was first grown in southern Italy, Basilicate and Campania. It is grown all around Australia, although the Riverland has had the best results. This red grape type produces a wine that is flavorful and fruity. One of our favorite Italian grape types, Aglianico, was planted by Riccaterra nearly six years ago using two of the best and most recent clones. Winemakers have a big say in the flavor and aroma of their products. The 2021 Riccaterra Orinto and the 2021 Terra do Rio Orinto are the wines we have chosen to compare winemaking changes. We adore Orinto. A white grape cultivar that is Portuguese in origin. It enjoys the warm, dry weather that the Riverland offers. Riccaterra Orinto 2021 is produced with little winemaking input. In stainless steel, it ferments before being bottled. Old oak barrels are used to ferment Terra do Rio Orinto. The wine is matured a little bit longer than the Riccaterra version before being bottled, which increases the mouthfeel and texture of the wine. It's uncommon to be able to contrast how winemaking and seasons can affect wine styles, but this exclusive deal will enable you to do so. Three bottles of the 2020 and 2021 Riccaterra Aglianico are included in this dozen, along with three bottles of the Riccaterra Orinto and Terra do Rio Orinto. This addition is extremely constrained. Water is essential for a vine's recovery. Rainfall timing and volume have an impact on the vine and alter the makeup of grapes. While a severe drought can reduce yields and endanger the health of the vines, a wet vintage can lower harvest quality. Rainfall's timing is also crucial. Rainfall during the winter months builds up a water reservoir that the vine's roots will use during the growing season. But late season or harvest rainfall can be disastrous because grapes that soak up a lot of water can dilute sugar and aromatic components. Additionally, rain can increase humidity, which favors the growth of rot and fungus. Grapes prefer generally warm days, chilly nights, and bright sun. The length of a grape's development cycle and ripening process are both impacted by high temperatures or excessive sunlight. The two key stages in the development of a grape, flowering and fruit set, both require heat. Fruit set is the transition from flowers to grapes, whereas flowering is the growth of inflorescences, a cluster of grape blossoms. These occurrences are temperature-dependent and are effectively prevented from occurring below the threshold of 15 degrees Celsius, 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Cool or warm vintages are common classifications for wines. Years with cooler temperatures and fewer intense heat waves are referred to as cooler vintages. Higher acidity, more freshness, and subtle fruity and flowery aromas can all be found in these wines. Grape ripening can be hampered by cooler vintages in chilly locations, especially for late ripening varietals. Low temperatures might cause the vine's growth cycle to be delayed and the shoot's growth phases to be inadequately fueled. However, cooler vintages frequently add an extra dose of freshness in warm climates. Warmer vintages, on the other hand, relate to years with extremely high temperatures, frequently interspersed with many heat waves. 
These circumstances frequently lead to full-bodied wines with jammy smells of ripe black fruits in red wine and tropical fruits in white wine, owing to the concentration of sugar in the grape, which can convert into greater degrees of potential alcohol. Due to the lower levels of acidity in the grapes in milder regions, these vintages tend to be less fresh and have an aroma character of more matured fruit. The secret to happy grapes is sunlight. Photosynthesis cannot occur in the absence of light, and vines cannot produce enough energy for the growth of grapes. Long days with little cloud cover are frequently indicative of a good vintage, whereas low light levels during the growing season are indicative of a terrible one. Extreme weather conditions like hail, frost, and drought can have an impact on the vine's general health as well as the quality of the grapes. Numerous of these occurrences are becoming more frequent and violent due to climate change, posing serious dangers to wine growing in many parts of the world. Large forest fires in Australia and the United States in 2020 covered wine regions with smoke, exposing grapes to smoke taint. While some smoke taint effects can be reversed, doing so will take a lot of work on the part of the winemaker. In the northern portion of Europe, winemakers are frequently impacted by frost, as was the case earlier this spring. After bud burst, when the buds are most vulnerable to frost, late spring frosts can be very destructive. So why is vintage important? Vintage is a true representation of what nature offered at a specific historical moment. It contributes to the distinctiveness of each wine and also makes the topic intriguing and ripe for research. In order to make wine clearer and brighter, producers may disclose whether eggs or dairy products were used in the fining process. However, they are not required to respond. They also don't have to disclose any information about their farming practices. Although a wine must adhere to certain standards in order to have the organic or biodynamic label, inexpensive booze frequently comes from extremely intense cultivation practices. We are particularly concerned about Prosecco overproduction. You are not required to be informed of the other components of the wine, such as the wood chips or purple dye that some cheap producers employ. What kind of yeast did the fermentation use? There is also no obligation to provide any information regarding the wine's production process. Was it fermented in a pricey brand new French oak barrel or a concrete tank from the 1970s? You might never find out. On the wine label, look for the vintage, which is the year the wine was created. If anything isn't immediately obvious on the front label, check the bottle's neck or the backside. The grapes were picked in the year indicated by this year. The vintages change year to year. Hail or a poorly timed storm during harvest can ruin an otherwise good vintage. Therefore, the vintage might provide insight into the wine's quality at the higher end of the market. A good year produces better wine than a bad year does. The very fact that a vintage date exists denotes, ideally, higher quality because vintage champagne and vintage port are only released in good years. However, no matter what you're drinking, the vintage date can help you determine how much bottle aging has occurred. Non-vintage wines typically taste good right away and are not likely to get better with aging. Words like Reserva and Gran Reserva have protected meanings in particular contexts, such as Rioja, and denote prolonged aging. The word reserve on the label, however, is typically purely for marketing purposes. It is helpful to be aware of the alcohol by volume ABV, level. White wines have an average alcohol content that is a little lower than 13.5%. The percentage is typically written in smaller print at the bottom of the front or back label. Legally, they are only have to be exact to the nearest 0.5%. You might wish to pair a lighter wine with lighter fare, like shellfish, or a darker red with meat, like steak. Even if more moderate amounts of alcohol are in style right now, there is nothing inherently wrong with a wine that has a high ABV of 15.5% as long as the acidity and fruit in the wine are balanced. However, a high alcohol content could indicate a jamier, flabbier wine. A maximum ABV limit has been established in some areas, such as warmer climates where grapes ripen quickly. This limit is intended to compel producers to maintain some acidity and balance. Some cooler area white wines, like a Smarag Riesling from Wacha, have a minimal ABV limit in other regions, where the goal is to prevent excessive acidity. Just right, not too hot and jammy, nor too cold and acidic. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comments section below.
If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.